Welcome to Keeping Up With Data. Keeping Up With Data is the podcast that keeps data enthusiasts up to speed with what is happening in the data world. We bring in the leading minds from the data industry to talk all things career, news, embarrassing stories, failures and successes. So something really important for us here at Precision Sourcing is mental health. It's something we've been focused on a lot over the last year or so. And we're lucky enough to have partnered with the Black Dog Institute. And we're going to be doing a lot of events with them this year. A lot of our events, money will be going towards them. And they're out there aiming to create a mentally healthier world for everyone. So if you wish to support the cause, please donate via the link in the bio on this podcast. And you'll be seeing a lot more information about Black Dog over the next year. Right. Welcome once again to Keep It Up With Data with myself, Joel Robinstein, my good friend, James. Hello. And today we're joined by Avi Mitra, who is currently working at... EG Australia. EG Australia. So, Avi, as always, would you like to introduce yourself to everybody? Yes, uh, data nerd, uh, <laughs> like pretty boring guy. Uh, might not be, uh, but yeah, like um, with the data industry for the last 16 years um, in four different countries. Um, currently with EG, um, kind of a product owner, data platform manager. Um, managing a team, um, doing solutioning on all that data stuff, which is probably a little nerdy, but yeah, as a person, I'm very easy going. Like, any questions from Joel and um, James? Smash him. Well, we're gonna get into it. You've come in wearing a iCloud data, I love data t-shirt, so you know, definitely living up to the nerd vibe. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, good, that's what we like. Um, well look, James, I'm gonna get you guys to chat a little bit today because Avi, you are someone quite interesting to me because um, when we first started working with you, when you first started working with EG, yeah. um, you went into a very green field, there wasn't a lot going yeah. on, and you're also someone to me who's almost carved out a patch created a role for yourself that yes. made sense to the business right yeah. which i think is something that everybody who hits that kind of years of experience that you hit would love to do but doesn't necessarily know how to do right and you james you've obviously known avi for a long time as well and you've watched him yeah on that journey right so we'll definitely dig into that um we'll do all the usual stuff we've got your best data jokes I heard you guys reading them before the show and no one was laughing. So that I have was, the answer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So that went well. And look, we'll try and dig into just a little bit how you made it to where you are, you know, who you are. Like you said, you're an easygoing guy. We'll yeah. ask you a bunch of questions and, and see what we can find out from you. So sure. do you want to just kick off? Just, you know, tell us a bit about, you know, I guess your background. You said 16 years. Where did it all start? Yeah. Let's, let's go from there. Yeah. So I started in India um, and uh, then moved to UK. Um, I stayed there two and a half years in the UK and then moved to New Zealand and <laughs> stayed in New Zealand for two years and then moved to Australia. So nice. it's quite a fascinating journey and all my roles are data centric. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed the evolution of um, how people perceive data uh, in modern days to the uh, previous like 10, 15 years ago where, where like data is pretty much stored as a repository and, and people don't use that, um, like use it well um, compared to this age, it's information age. We know every second there are mil millions or billions of data generating. So yeah, things got changed. Um, uh, like I changed myself as well mm -hmm. uh, through the journey, like mm, unlearn many things to learn new things. So <laughs> which is obviously uh, for anybody who is in data world knows very well, like you can't just stick into a particular technology or um, a particular tool set. You have to improve yourself mm. every day. Um, keep you motivated. Uh, there are lots to do. Uh, there are new uh, domains coming up like 10 years back. Nobody that much care about data science, but it, yeah. it was there from, I think, um, even 90s like you know like uh, we all know stats and uh, what it called like um, operational research and all sort of mm. things but we never thought like we will extensively use it for our day-to-day -day purpose so it's generalized like yeah. a bmw car you know like 
50 years back. Very few people can afford it, but now I can. So yeah. you know, like, uh, <laughs> The the data journey is actually like that. So that's mm. a good way of looking at it. I've never thought about that. <laughs> it, it makes it, it really realistic because it's yeah back then those sort like all this sort of even a car. Yeah. If you owned a car, that you was just, yes. yeah. And now it's normal. Just because yeah. we started talking about cars, just straight yeah. in there, aren't you, James? My like, brain's just switched. Yeah. Over. Like, oh, cool cars, <laughs> BMW. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Like um, so. Um, Obviously, that does not change my status quo. Like, um, means uh, it's all about how we perceive uh, things. Um, mm. And um, during the journey, I learned a lot. Uh, I um, like worked with different um, cultural background people, different countries. I understand their culture, their mindset. I see, like, it means during this process, I have a 360 view how how people see stuff. Uh, Somewhere you will have to go a little slow, somewhere you have to be very fast, those kind of things. So it makes me, uh, I mean, it helps me to build, uh, like, the person I am today, like, it helps me to build the person I am today mm. because I have the 360 view, where, where, like, what to push out or what to go a little slow. And also, I believe that not only IQ needed for any uh, successful person, IQ is one aspect which will sure. give you to a certain level, but there are other cues, and everybody should concentrate on the other cues. Yeah, like how you behave with others, how you deal with others, how you try to help others, how you try to understand the others' problem. So that is, I think, for me, is the success factor. Yeah, uh, rather than too much delve into technicality, blah blah blah, which will probably go out of the mind for many business people. If you like chill with them, talk their language, and obviously you see the main problem I see, there are different languages. So mm. IT people have one language, business having one language, but nobody thinks deeply how we can correlate that and make a single language. So both parties will yeah, understand. Yeah, that makes sense. Another uh, great uh, understanding about, it's it's very personal to me, uh, many organizations think IT as uh, a liability, but yeah. I think IT nowadays is an asset yeah 100%. if you add the data bit it's it's it, it's a like it's a big asset you, mm. sh you should uh, think and preserve for future generations um, not only just your day-to-day -day analytics for your sustainability for your business benefit and your growth so the growth trajectory we never thought of from data sense we mm. always think of the normal analytics so just build a data warehouse put some reporting done like business is running well. It's not like that. There are new startups coming every day. So you have to be, even big companies have to think on that perspective that anybody can challenge anything. Mm. Think about companies like Microsoft, Google, and all those big companies. Probably 50 years back, they were not there. But now they are the yeah, biggest. Yeah, look at where company. they are. So that's my but, view on data and how data is evolving. And a lot to unpack there that you've picked on. So <laughs> we're going to just take our time and slowly work our way through each of the bits that you said there. And let's start with what you've mentioned there. There's a different language between IT and business. It's not just IQ, there's EQ, there's other things that's picking up on, on the way people interact. So I'd like yeah. to focus a little bit there because it's the age old problem for a technical person, eight, 10 years into their experience, they've hit a ceiling. Yep. They want to do more, but unless you're like a chief engineer at a Google, you kind of need to be able to understand that language from the business, right? Yep. So, yep. so what tips and techniques could you give people to help them, I guess, step away and into that more business sense world? I mean, maybe not so much just the usual, you know, do a course, do an MBA or whatever, yep. but just on a day-to-day -day basis, what, what would you recommend? Yeah, but look, I will not uh, answer it on the like um, on the educational level or something like that yeah. it's human behavior or, or how yeah. you interact with the outer world so my perspective would be look think about google engineer so you will see those are uh, mostly those engineers are pretty much research centric yeah. they have a domain they have their own world and they are completely concentrated on world. But think about a normal consultant, um, being into a consulting farm or a, a business, uh, like normal business house or whatever, things are completely different, okay? Because your business is ever changing. 
but think about the Google principal engineer in Google. He has some areas. He focus on those areas. Mm -hmm. He build those products and done. But for us, no. Every day we have several different people to handle. Mm. Different people uh, coming to different ideas, different requests we have to solve. So th this world is completely different. This corporate world is completely different than the engineer in Google. So you have to first understand, like, I, from my perspective, if you think about an uh, engineer who working in embedded systems or all sorts of things, they stay there a longer time mm. because they are mentally just research oriented. Yeah, sure. But here you see it's very like what it called dynamic world. Yeah. And you have to adapt like technologies. Like think about ETL. So many ETL tools come. Yeah. Uh, uh, so you have to add up very quickly. But I don't think uh, Google people have to learn all the ETL tools. They will build their own, that's all, yeah, sure. uh, period. So it's, it's a different dynamics and different. So in this world, it's more how you interact with people, yeah. how you understand their problem and how we are solving. And you are solving real, real time. It's not like that you have a problem statement, you are working, researching, blah, 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 mm -hmm. taking six months, seven months to build the stuff and go from there. You have a competitor. And and you have only one competitor. Here you might have, like, if you think about the retail industry, you have 10 competitors. Yeah. So you have to be, uh, like, fast to understand how we can accelerate the business. From Obviously, my domain is data. I can tell mm -hmm. in data perspective, but also all the IT verticals. It's not about data always. Sometimes other other like teams should be also collaborating with sure. uh, yeah, the data team. But now in terms of the... Other cues, I would say like, um, be true yourself. Uh, second is respect others. Mm -hmm. um, value others idea, mm. but also value your ideas. Okay. Uh, if you can't keep yourself happy, you can't keep anybody happy. Yeah. These are the golden rules. Well, it's the, it's the oxygen mask on a plane, isn't it? Yes. Like put your oxygen mask yeah, on first, absolutely. get yourself sorted. Yes. And then, you know, yeah. go from there. Absolutely. So all those things has been defined out of some human analytics. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. Do you know what as well? It, about 2014, 2015, 2016, when data science, the actual buzzword was, it was basically stats was just changing to data science. Yeah, so. One of the key phrases that, that happened a lot around that time was, a lot of statisticians were still trying to go for that 99.99% accurate model. And then the business was saying, hang on a minute, 80% accurate is enough for us. Can we just get this out the door? Can we get moving on it? And a lot of statisticians at the time were so used to their research world, they couldn't pull themselves out of, yeah, but that's not good enough for me into, but that is actually good enough for the business and Absolutely. the business need. And that's kind of where we're at now, where a lot more data people are starting to understand that done is better than perfect let's keep moving forward right yes yes and it's the same with when we when we're speaking to candidates i know with you as well james you know we always say that you've just said there avi you know you got to look behind what the person's why is a person's driver yeah. isn't usually what the first thing they tell you no you have to dig into it, and that's why i think thing that you touch on like be true to yourself because yep. the thing is every industry really especially within data now like you're working with people so much so if you show your true colors, it lets people see you for you yep. and they can then build stronger relationships. They can start to understand your work and you can understand how to interact with them better. So, mm -hmm. And it then can also propel you further and suddenly that's, okay, we get that. You wanted to find something that's 99.95% correct. Let's get 80% and then we can help you try and get that extra 19%. Yeah. So it's if they can understand you as well and why you think that way. So it kind of benefits you in the long run if you just stop hiding behind the walls. Definitely. The best data people nowadays understand there's an element of sales <laughs> yeah. to what you're doing as well, right? <laughs> yes, yes. You can't just be walking in a room and thinking, I know what it is and they're going to get it from this one chart I'm going to show. Absolutely. Yeah, means you, you can sell data like for any like competitor analysis you can mm. sell it but you have to understand what data to sell yeah. not like optos <laughs> so <laughs> yeah yeah that's another that. aspect but yeah like <laughs> i didn't have to get a new driver's license which is good I did, get, I, I did get a message saying that they got my data and my wife's data yeah. but i also sit there thinking i feel like everyone's already got that anyway i'm not a particularly 
date a private person, shall we say? Yeah. I've clicked on enough cookies and things in the last 10 years where yeah. I think if someone wants to know who I am and where I am, yeah. they can probably find that out. So Yes, uh, yeah. as long as you are like um, not that frequent in Instagram. Yeah. yeah. No, I don't have an Instagram account, so don't worry. That's, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, you're yeah. secured. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually, you know what? On all the social channels, not too bad, apart from LinkedIn, obviously, which we have to be on our job. So, all right, so let's talk about your role at EG because... <laughs> I think, again, as I said at the beginning of this podcast, a really interesting topic. So I think, James, when you placed Avi there, it was in an uh, engineering style role? It was an like architecture? A, yeah, BI specialist. Type BI role. specialist, yeah. right. And now Literally. you're data product manager, leading the team yeah. three years on? Yeah, two, two and a half years. Two and a half years, years three, yeah. Okay, cool. So you walked in that door. Yeah. You knew it was Greenfield. Yep. Yeah. You lifted the hood, and I'm guessing you went, wow, this really is... Yeah. Greenfield, because it was a new acquisition, <laughs> yeah. right? At yes, the time, it was yeah. a new acquisition. It's completely like a startup. Yeah. Okay. So, who was there when you started? What was the environment like? Let's start unpicking it from there. Yeah. So when I started, like um, uh, the DO one, um, kind of, it's it's happening a huge migration from Moody's to EG. EG actually acquired the business from Moody's. Yeah. For uh, we, we all know, and and it's a it's a massive company um, based in UK. Blackburn, uh, it's also, right? Yeah, it's in Blackburn yeah, headquarters. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And um, it's uh, like kind of uh, currently um, owning ASDA uh, in UK. Plus, uh, it's having Cumberland Farms in US. So it's a massive operation. Has there been like a war was over here? Yes, yeah. yes. But this uh, obviously uh, Australian business would be completely small, but yeah. obviously it's pretty much close to 600 stores. Same colors, green though, so that's good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> True. So when I went there, it was kind of like they have um, a kind of think of um, Azure mm -hmm. um, and um, they like having some. Uh, POC environment, concept environment, nothing else. And there is one guy <laughs> <laughs> whom we uh, started chatting, and uh, like there were excellent contractors mostly. I am the only EG, EG guy, data guy on that. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, obviously, uh, my boss was there, but she was like seeing lots of other portfolios. So, data sure. is me. And people started coming with me questions on all sorts of things. I just, uh, <laughs> what is happening? You started going, I'm not, getting, I'm not getting paid enough yeah, for this. Yeah. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, so uh, the moment they started coming, I, I understand uh, their questions pretty mm -hmm. well. I, because I had previous Caltech experience from my sure. consulting days. I understand how retail business works, which helped me on this role, to be frank. But obviously not uh, at this large scale. Sure. Okay, now the moment I interact to really understand what I have to do and um, I the first focus was to understand the data what data we're receiving from different sources part of the migration or as a as a normal systems and uh, the very fact is the moment I joined from next month uh, like Willy system migrate to EG and all the migration started mm. so you you pretty much if you think about a migration if so one store migrated two store and we have to migrate almost 600 stores so it's it's kind of a phased away now think about a sales report then half of your sales information is in the holder system half of this so i quickly understand that we need a proper data architecture model yeah. uh, to gather those which one holds a historical or or uh, the the Wooly um, uh, system information one one should be SG and club it. So I, I concentrated on that. I, I built the architecture yep. very quickly with the guy, and then I feel that I pretty much need more people. Uh, the moment we show some of the analytics uh, to the business, business got confidence and business Great. keep on coming. Then I thought of like there was no uh, reporting <laughs> at that <laughs> time, and reporting with Excel. So I introduced Power BI to the team and um, then things started uh, b because Power BI uh, like was uh, very well accepted by the mm. business and um, they want more information out of it and then uh, like I streamlined architecture I streamlined um, this um, whole integration framework now we have almost 16 uh, different sources data coming yeah, nice. it's going out and everything is automated and all sort of things but it, it takes time and then I gradually build the team um, so we have now we have almost like um, for one side and there are shows as well almost 10 people is the one of I mean, it's, it's kind of a big uh, uh, like team at the moment and um, so 
So I guess just just to quickly stop you there. So you, you walked into a, a new role, <laughs> and it sounds like whilst they knew they needed someone, like they didn't know to what extent. Yes. And also, it sounds like you went in there and went, even though this isn't my necessarily my job description. Yes. It needs true. doing. So I'm going to be the one to do it. And and so what gave you the confidence to go, you know what, I'm going to do something out of my job description? Was it more so that you could see a future for yourself as a, a lead? Yep. Or was it more so that you went, it needs doing, someone's got to do it, i got to do it? Got it. Yeah. So, uh, like, I came from a heavy consulting background. Like, I, I sure. worked in big four and all sorts of things. But... You know, like the satisfaction even in working in the data field, I never got. I understand why. Because obviously I started with data world, the full 16 is all data, data, mm. ETL, reporting, blah, 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 and all sorts of things, data architecture, uh, data management. But the thing is, I wanted to do something which is 360, give sure. you a 360 view. And the moment I land in EG, I saw that opportunity. And, uh, and then I was quite determined that this is the place I will show that yeah, like I, I will take all the all the blocks yeah. I wanted to achieve. So, and um, obviously, f I think there are a couple of things which is very important. You should have a um, manager or boss who who okay. understands you, a good team who supports you, your positive attitude, mm -hmm. and success criteria. I would say the main success criteria of everything apart is balancing. So the moment you know how to balance stuff, you are successful. Yeah, okay. So I, I try to focus on all those things. And yeah, like kind of a vision. I had a vision, a strategy, how to do it one by one. Yeah. So first build a data layer, architecture, then reporting, and then um, like streamline all the pipelines, then automation, mm. uh, then data management, now data science. So obviously, if you think without all those building blocks, you can't achieve like what we have achieved till then. Yeah. So, so, and those experience I got from my consulting days. Of course, that makes sense. So what I'm picking up from that as well is, so you saw an opportunity to put in mm -hmm. to the business, yep. but you also got back from the business in a good manager and a good mm -hmm. leader, yep. you know, good people around you who said, you yep. know what, we can see what you're trying to achieve, so let's support Absolutely. that. And, and often what we hear is, you know, successful people find their opportunity. They don't wait yep. for their opportunity, which it sounds like you did as well. Yes. Uh, uh, like the thing is, obviously, um, like um, without support of business, without support of your leadership team, yeah. without support of team, it's very hard to achieve something. Yeah. Yeah. So if you have a like-minded team, and it's very hard to have a like-minded sure, team. Sure, yeah. I mean, it yeah. takes a while to find that, yes. doesn't it? Yeah. So, so so it takes time, but gradually, if you if you think that I wanted to build it, yeah. it, it should come from, yeah, of, like from you, yourself. Yeah, yourself yeah, yeah. yeah, That I wanted to build it, I will. I wanted to have the, those people uh, pretty much like-minded who is um, willing to take challenges. Sure. Um, and obviously, some people likes complex stuff. Some people like say normal life balance. Life of course, balance. but yeah. you need both. You need both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need both. It's it's not like uh, like uh, always complexity will give you pleasure. No. Yeah, exactly. Uh, balance is also gives, <laughs> gives yeah, you sure. pleasure. So yeah, so if you have a team which is a balanced team, mm -hmm. so, um, uh, then it, the both person who is always wants complex and wants balance should see the other aspect of the life. Yeah, that makes sense. So that's that brings harmony in the team. Yeah. You got it? Like yeah. so so that's how I think it and I, I have a team that does of, that, yeah. Uh, both kind of people. That's who, good. Who, yeah, we hear some stories, don't we, James, where you know, you might be speaking to someone who's started a role and two months later they're like, Oh I'm, I'm out. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I've not I've been not hired to do this job. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this business straight away, right? Yeah. But then you have other people who maybe see that as an opportunity, mm -hmm. but then there also there's people who, fair enough to them, they've been hired to do one job description, they walk in there and it's, you know, like a data scientist suddenly doing reporting. Yeah, it's very, like, if you're, with that example, like, that makes sense to be like, it's not in any area of my expertise and it's not in line to what I want to do. Yeah. Although it's, when it's an opportunity like that you had where it's you can see the long-term benefit you can see how it like fits into what you might want to do and that'll help benefit you yep 
I think that's like that sort of golden goose opportunity, like that golden egg. Yeah, really, yeah, yeah. You... Uh, absolutely, yeah. Life always gives you a chance. You <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you got to say, yeah, exactly. Yeah, uh, but I think uh, like um, uh, in terms of data science and uh, like reporting, I would say like if you think about uh, data science, some of the organization probably not ready to not do yeah. that extent, but they had data scientists. Now the thing is, um, data scientists obviously they need a clear state of data or clean state of data. And mo most of the organization having that script, like I would not say script, but it, it's not present. Still, yeah. they are figuring out how we have clean state data. We're better than we were a few years ago, at absolutely, least. Absolutely, absolutely. People yeah. are understanding it. Yeah, it's a modern way of thinking. So yeah. but the, mo the more uh, ideas will float in the market, we'll have more good, yeah. uh, robust um, design and systems, all sorts of things. Yeah. And people learn from mistakes, obviously. Yeah. Um, so, like the digital push, uh, we see the advantage. We, we know the yeah. advantage. Well, all our government portals uh, went digital, and we see it's yeah. pretty easy. Like, oh, you can, you can keep everything in your, in your like, pocket. You yeah. don't have to like, carry a physical card. So no, I live off my phone. Oh, the guy no, did I don't yes, use yeah. my card at all. <laughs> <laughs> the guy did it, Domitello? Is, is yes, it, yeah. he's 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 finishing he's soon really, though. Yeah, but he's really like he's he amazing. Was, he yeah, amazing. I see him all over LinkedIn all yes, the time, yes. just always fighting for the right thing. It yeah, seems he's, he's absolutely legend on this. But he's like, leaving, yeah. unfortunately. So never mind. Yeah, everything, every it, good thing ha has <laughs> come to an end. Of course, of course. So I yeah, so, like yeah. It, it's life. So we have yeah. to take it as it is. Of uh, course. So yeah. Ha do you do you feel that? Um, how do you feel about this statement? So picking on again some of the things that you said there. In order to be successful in data in 10 years from now, it's going to be very difficult if you're just a technical specialist because as we've seen over the years, technology and technic the technical side gets automated. Y your job might not be there Absolutely. in 10 years from Absolutely. now. Absolutely. Yeah, okay. So you, you would agree that you need to be able to diversify who you are as a business person, absolutely. More importantly than anything, without business acumen, without understanding the business, you can't be a great data leader. Yeah, that means you. There is no no uh, possibility. If you know, like you have tech tech uh, like technically very strong and something like that, you can't you can't excel. You excel at a certain level. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like technology comes and goes. And and your patch will get smaller. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, let's take a DBA. Yeah. A DBA, when I started recruiting 12 years ago, yeah. you get a job anywhere. A DBA now, <laughs> it's nobody wants 15% of yeah. companies are hiring DBAs compared to 100%, right? Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. There is a reason because everything you like, I can set up a database yeah. uh, right now. So I, I don't need a DBA to do that. But exactly. yeah, my portfolio is not a DBA. So that, that's how it, it, it works. Yeah. Because we simplify stuff day by day. We see there are massive problem. We simplify, we put thought process and similarly data world or technology tools. But if you understand the business, mm. you will be there forever. Yeah, exactly. You have to understand the business. And obviously, and then if you understand the business and you have the tech background, mm. then obviously. There's a lot of power in that. Yes. A lot of power Absolutely. in that. Yeah, yeah, 100%. And I'm sure in the future, we're going to be seeing a lot more technical CEOs, technical um, business leaders, in a sense, you know, in, in they understand the world of data more. Maybe they're not come from a... You yeah, know. I have a view on that. Like you, you remember recently Elon Musk uh, yeah. said that like technical uh, managers should be from technical background. I, I, I obviously uh, hundred percent um, uh, back that uh, particular statement. But I also say that those technical managers should also understand business yeah. uh, and tr try to like help business to achieve what what was initially happening. Like uh, even a finance guy can be a IT manager, but the uh, the like the problem here is obviously um, when you are uh, like um, like what it called managing a large portfolio or lots of tool sets and all sorts of things and you don't have any IT mm. knowledge it's kind of a like um, doesn't make sense or or you probably not get the desired result yeah. you're understanding so technical people should be on technical roles uh, and um, obviously there should be a culture. And the culture would be not like, and uh, I see data is the best way to, to um, like, um, because data is the place where business and IT actually uh, hold hand in exactly, hand. Yeah. So uh, all the literacy, all the good thing about IT, you can translate through data. Yeah. So people have to think that 
to streamline the relationship between business and IT and um, like like kind of work behind the scene to make sure that IT is an asset. Yeah, that makes sense. Well, maybe the few things I agree on El with Elon Musk on. Yeah. He seems to be going down that kind of crazy route uh, at the he, moment. So, yeah, yeah, sometimes you like this kind of people who as bluntly straightforward on yeah. stuff. Uh, sometimes you like generally uh, most of the people try to be politically correct. But yeah. sometimes you have to say the truth. And sometimes you have to support the truth. Um, and obviously, uh, the world can't survive without innovation. No, no of course. No, I understand it, it, that, yeah. I just think he's sticking his nose in a lot of things that maybe uh, aren't necessarily... He loves, he loves it. That's the thing, <laughs> balancing. Yeah. You can balance anything, <laughs> yeah. you balance it. If you can't, just... <laughs> I saw a tweet, he said the other day that he'd been up all night trying to find a way for him to solve the Ukraine-Russia crisis. And I'm like, <laughs> just <laughs> maybe know. a bit far out your lane there, Elon. You know, you're, you're not in charge of everything. So yes, just he, just chill out yes, and the, build some cars. Yeah, yeah like, yeah, so uh, I, I learned one thing, like, in uh, consulting one. It is what it is. So oh, let, yeah, let oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not out there tweeting him back, telling him, like, like all the other millions of people tweeting him back. I'm not, I just like to watch from afar and, you know, let him do his thing. Uh, but yeah. it's, it's funny to watch. The, the moment I, I will have 50 billion uh votes then definitely i will <laughs> well, yeah that. yeah <laughs> maybe yeah maybe you can if you've got that much money so um yeah. all right let's 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 move on to the data jokes because yeah. you know i think that's a good time now um now we've talked about eg and, and what your journey was there now the data jokes today i'm a bit worried <laughs> <laughs> i'm not sure that you're both very confident in your data jokes I'm going to say you first this week, James. What do you reckon? Yeah, I'll go first. Okay, cool. I'll set the bar. Okay, here we go. Just ask the first one. No, I've got... Um, <laughs> so, why couldn't the restaurant owners open a new data server? Why could the restaurant owners not open a new data server? So, they didn't have enough servers. <laughs> Look, you got two laughs out of that. and a <sighs> So, that's pretty good. Okay. Oh, I have a lots to live up to. <laughs> okay, so what do you call a drive full of sorted data? Dit, sorry, sorted dit. What, what I don't know. What do you call it? What do you call it? Information formation. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. That is the worst one we've ever had, I'm going to say. That's really bad. But you know what? You seem to be enjoying it and you have a laugh. That's all that matters. All right, very good. Well done coming with those. All right, let's do some more fun questions, seeing as we're in the fun part of the pod. Um, if you sat down with your... I don't know, do you have kids? Do you have yeah, cousins? two kids. Two yeah. kids. Okay, how old are they? Um, four and a half and nine. Cool, four and a half. So you sat down with your four and a half year old. What do you tell them that you do? Yeah... <laughs> it's a very tough question. Yeah, right? <laughs> but yeah, let me think about what I do. I, I actually uh, tell him I like work in a computer. That's pretty You work in a computer? Yeah, I, I watch YouTube. <laughs> you uh, watch YouTube. Uh, uh, but not uh, like him, uh, a little sure. less. But yeah, I, I uh, work in a computer. I watch YouTube. That's what I do. <laughs> 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 Is this a little secret to where you've got to in your career now where you literally just sit at work watching YouTube? <laughs> How to build data work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay, cool. What about your nine year old? Yeah, she knows I'm, uh, I'm in computers. Uh, yeah. I did um, like computer engineering, all sorts of things. She, she knows. She's quite mature. She's uh, like, she, she does coding. So, oh, cool. So, uh, yeah. she, so you say that's what I do. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. And she loves to understand all those things. She has some like interest on those things. So, yeah, she, she pretty much knows what I'm yeah, doing. Cool. But not like, um, like data work or something like that. Sure. But yeah, he, she knows like... I Understands I'm the concept. Yeah. Do you know, that's a really cool thing to pick on it because um, I don't have kids and we be doing loads of work, you know, um, with diversity within the data industry, as I'm sure you know. Yeah. Um, but things like um, Girl Geek and Girls Who Code, all those groups that are yeah. doing amazing things. So to hear that there's a nine-year-old girl in your family who's just at school learning how to code at nine years old? Yeah, she started coding. That's, yeah. And is yeah. that, um, 
But like, from school, she started, and then yeah, I I sometimes help her. Okay, cool. So. And is that just in the curriculum now? That that uh, that age they start, or she gets to elect to, to uh, try and go down that? No, route? it's it's provided by the school, but it's optional, so you can go. And most of the people go. Uh, like so, um, it's it's kind of I I like it. Um, the way they have spent the um, like interactive coding sessions yeah. and it's coming it's coming and you will see um, like uh, people understand coding people understand lots of well, if they're doing it from nine years old we're going to have some yeah like amazing if, if you go to US people are doing it for five years so right, we're okay, five, four, four years okay. <laughs> um, but you said it's not mandatory so it's, it seems it's a bit weird to me that, that this wouldn't now be optional at the moment yeah but, uh, Eventually, it will be mandatory. I think uh, from uh, year seven or something. Right. Like okay. That, yeah. So, but yeah, um, like it, it depends. Some people probably get bored. Sure. Some people loves it. So, so all depends on that. But yeah, yeah, of course. But if you have at least basic understanding, it will probably help you in, in, oh, in God. the future. Oh God. Oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So, yeah. Do you see that a, a high percentage of kids are opting to take it, or you not maybe across that? I don't know. Uh, I think uh, kids loves games. So sure, it's done the right way. We, yes. So if you, if you think about that perspective, like all the games comes with a programming mindset. Yeah, and I've got yeah. And so if you if you like um, kind of uh, drive your kids on that aspect, like okay, you are playing this game, but this game has been built on certain yeah. things. And if if you can, if you are interested, you can go for this, and then that will probably uh, create some interest in how how we should code and also yeah, see of because all the scenarios they will then think uh, are jumping crossing and also yeah. small small stuff so, um, surely it's a lot easier these days as well to get kids into it because you, yep. you know they see the computer they see the phone that's that's fun right yeah. they, they, yeah. they're watching shows on it they're watching bluey whatever it is so yes if they're at school and the school goes hey we're gonna we're gonna do a class <laughs> on a computer yeah i mean that's got to be a win right yeah, my like my four and a half years old, he knows uh, like Netflix, um, what to go, uh, which yeah. movie to watch. Think about our age. <laughs> Do we know that anything? No, no. Uh, nothing. So, no. so that that's the information age. That's the key. Sure. That's the future. So, yeah, if you if you like kind of um, if you have interest, to be frank, you, you can you can uh, yeah um, involve your kids on your um, work as well, like. That's really uh, give good to the, give them, Yeah, give them an understanding of what Excel is. Yeah, yeah nice. <laughs> um, right, thinking back to when you were a kid, what did you want to be? I wanted a soccer player. Oh, really? Frank, yeah. Any so, good? Uh, I was. Yeah? Uh, I was. I still play for Churches League here nice. in Sydney for King's Old Boys. So I think that uh, obviously the, the thing what we call balance also needs your passion, yeah. whatever you have. It might be surfing, it might be soccer, it might be rugby, it might be AFL, what, whatever you like, just go for it, um, enjoy the moment. Um, so I would say the, the mentality of um, like patience, uh, balancing, all those attributes are uh, like um, other cues. Yeah. I got it from a soccer field. Nice. I got it from chessboard. So uh, yeah. the toughness, mental toughness, patience, uh, respect to others, team, like team. Yeah, uh, true. How to work with the team and uh, like uh, look for a uh, singular goal and uh, achieve it. So those kind of things, all soccer built. Nice. If I'm not a soccer player or I was not interested in soccer, I'm probably not that successful I am today. So I, I obviously stress on those aspect of life where people yeah, the should. social skills yes yeah so um and also i love dance so i i trained salsa uh, wow. for a couple of months uh, and wow. I, I still dance with my kids um i have a very nice uh dancing uh event on my anniversary wife loved it I mean, yeah, nice. she, she have to but yeah like yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah we enjoyed uh, i enjoyed every moment of life um uh, being a data professional we have lots of pressure in life yeah, of course um, Wife feels also in, in a uh, high profile um, job. So, but we balance. We, we uh, out of our work, we give maximum time to our kids to see uh, how we can help them mm. to grow. Um, not as a like nerdy or not as a uh, sports icon, but a, a nice person uh, who can chill with others very easily yeah, and good. all sort of things. So, so we, we think those are very important for life to, to be successful. Yeah, we do speak a lot about what you do in your career and what's happening in work on this podcast. So it's nice to hear about, you know, what, the, what happens outside, yeah. you know, what's Absolutely. under the lid. What did you want to be when you were a kid, James? Uh, I think at first it was a police officer. Oh, I remember you telling me that. And before, then I went yeah. to a zookeeper. And then I Any particular animal? 
Uh, giraffes. <laughs> I made my parents stand at the zoo for three hours once so I could oh watch the giraffes. For three awesome. hours? Mm-hmm. Awesome. Same with the digger. Oh, and oh, a digger. Awesome. Yeah, they were glad I grew up and out of that phase. Nice. <laughs> awesome, awesome. I reckon you'd have been a good zookeeper. I did it um, when I was in year 10 or year 9, all of my best friends from school. We did a, over the course of a year, you work at the zoo for free, and then school holidays you kind of do like oh, that's cool. work. It and was what, awesome. what made you not go for it then? Uh, well, as you know, I love my cars. <laughs> oh, and yeah, true. They cost a lot of money. And they do, yeah. zookeepers, the trade-off is you get to work with animals. And I love animals. Cool. I love my cars more. Fair enough. Um, right, coming to the end. We haven't yep. got too long. We're already uh, past five o'clock awesome. here in Sydney, yeah. which is good. <laughs> so, some questions we have to ask. Yep. Most influential book mm-hmm. that you have read that has helped you? No, it doesn't even have to be in your career. I'm expanding it out based on you, you know, talking about stuff outside of work as well. I actually, the most influential book which I read is uh, The Kite Runner. Um, yeah, okay. So, which, which gives me a perspective of like, um, the world we are living in and the world where people are in such pain, um, how people are uh, like kind of uh, dealing with difficult situations. Mm. Like currently, if you see, uh, obviously, Ukraine, Russia conflict, yeah. Israel, Palestine conflict, there are lo- lots of conflicts. And obviously, in, if you see Africa, many countries having poverty and all sorts of things. Mm. So we are well off, like on yeah, that yeah. aspect. And we should we should cherish that and we should support all those um, and give our positive view. Um, so like, so that that book gives me that, that prospect, uh, prospect of other side of where um, the guy uh, loves to uh, kind of fly kites and all sorts of things, and uh, then where I started and all sorts of things, and t- uh, life got completely different. Yeah, uh, and how he ended up in US and all sorts of things. So yeah, this is a fascinating story of a little kid how he has grown up, and that gives me like um, uh, that kind of um, uh, moments of uh, like um, responsibility, which probably lead to be a better person, and uh, and uh, thinking that I ha- probably I'm 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 happy because I yeah, have okay. everything, and there are many people who potentially doesn't offer anything, so we should support them. So it's so a good book for perspective then for you. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Do you have a book ever that you not, not really a reader? Not really. No, no, I remember the one that I read yeah. in school that I can't remember the name, but it was like a trilogy and. Um, it was about like dystopian, like how the world would have turned out and that, and it's the whole story of basis makes you like looking at not judging a book by its cover and trusting yep. people if you try and help each other. Yep. But yeah, I'm not a massive reader. Yeah, I'm more of a, like a f- fantasy sci-fi kind of reader as well, <laughs> so I'm I'm not really got too many. Yeah, books. I, I like all all, all kinds of books, so I I don't like uh, I think uh, like every book having some something to pass on. Yeah. So so I take it that way so yeah i use books for more of an escape ah okay take me to a different world that isn't like the world that we're in so that i can switch off so you know yeah yeah. absolutely yeah makes sense sense. makes sense right all right a very very important question to me that i really like that some people find very strange if you were stuck in a zombie apocalypse Mm -hmm. and you could only have three people with you Mm -hmm. your family is safe do not fear they're in a bunker so yes. you're not going to say your family. Which three people would you want in the zombie apocalypse with you? They can be fictional, mm-hmm. dead, alive, anything. Yeah, I, I will be taking Spider-Man. Uh, to it's a really good shout. Yeah. You know, so. no one else has actually said a superhero <laughs> until now, and that just makes so much sense. Like, yeah, I mean, if I take Spider-Man, Superman, and, and, and probably, um, who else? Uh, Superwoman, we should... We should have. Yeah. More, uh, Wonder <laughs> like Woman would be good yeah, too. Yeah. I'd, I'm more than Wonder yeah. Woman than Superwoman yeah, yeah, personally. Okay. But yeah. yeah. So uh, then I'm, I'm three pretty much heroes. Yeah. You're set. Yeah. So what do you bring to the party? You <laughs> 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 can build a way house. Data man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, take me to the other one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, that's a really good way of looking at it. I feel I should have put some sort of caveat that you can only have one superhero. So I'm going to say you can only have Spider Man. Okay. Uh, then uh, I probably take uh, Donald Trump and uh, Elon Musk. Oh, really? So I did. 
<laughs> and you just send them out into the zombies. Yes. Cool. So it's just you and Spider-Man hanging out. Yeah. That's cool. To be fair, Spider-Man is not in the same universe as Superman and Wonder Woman as well. So, you know, we're going to not let you get away with that. Yeah. All right. Fantastic. Right. Last question for today. A very important one. If you were in front of Anthony Albanese and you had a chance to show him any data set in order to just change his opinion on something or push him towards something, what would you try and show him? Oh, I wanted to show him that, like, um, about special kits, how quickly the special kits are, um, like, um, the numbers of special kits growing, and we should do something about them. Like, um, I think by 2030, there will be an increase of, I think, 10% of uh, special really? kits because of our lifestyle. So we should think... Um, on education perspective, uh, facilities perspective, mm. and all sorts of things, we should uh, we should uh, like do some research uh, and like obviously I will show the data, but sure, sure, yeah. but the the thing is the uh, fact is like there are um, like plenty of work we should do on that aspect because um, changing lifestyle is creating lots of problems for us and, definitely and that that future generation will be will be suffering and they're less of a minority like you're saying right absolutely and, and so nobody is caring about that because yeah. uh, you if you see to think about like mm, that's from a personal note like if you think about normal kids you have so many edutechs like but think about one platform which is giving education to its special kids yeah that makes sense that's a really nice way to end up today's podcast thank so, you for thank ending you. it on a good note no worries well anything else that you'd like to add uh, let you go? no I really enjoyed um, the discussion I <laughs> passed very quickly today <laughs> yeah it really did uh, and uh, like I, I'm sorry to James about um, like, uh, like well, at least three or four times I say no man I don't have time to <laughs> go and meet with you guys so apologies for that not at all well, but I, uh, I always uh, like enjoy chatting with you I, I remember uh, like three years back we met first time in this room yeah, yeah, right, yeah. and yeah I know you guys know my journey how I kind of um was in a kind of a like, um, but I'm uh, not so bad shape, but yeah, in in in, uh, in a difficult phase of mm. my life, where you guys helped me to to kind of um, get through that, and then obviously you guys also trusted that these guys can do something, and which 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 is coming uh, at the moment in front of everyone, uh, especially in data world, which is which is smashing. Awesome. Well, good work, James. And good work, Avi, and thank you for joining us today, and um, thank you for everyone for listening. My pleasure. Thank smashing. You. Cheers.